I have bought a 130 year old cottage in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. Many people have said that I am naive to buy a fixer upper having no building skills. And it's true that I am amateur at best. <laughs> but listen, I am on a journey to feeling more alive and less alone. None of us are here on this earth for very long, and I think it's pretty outrageous to not shoot your shot at the life you truly want to be living. Life isn't always easy, and I think there's a real magic in pursuing beauty and intention despite the darkness of the world. I bought Dreamwood Cottage because this place specifically makes me feel like I belong and I know it's going to challenge me to grow into the woman I have the potential to be and I dream that one day maybe my future family can live here as well. If you're interested in home renovations or you just want a friend, come on over and stay a while. Welcome to Dreamwood. All right, we are back at it. We're back in the study. This room looked very different when we started. <laughs> it looked like outer space, if you can remember. My dream for this room was to have a beautiful built-in bookshelf. I invited my friend Ben over because he is a carpenter. Well, when he came here, he pointed out that the wall was extremely crooked. So we took down that wall, including all of the old lath and plaster. Remember, this house is 130 years old, so the way they built walls back then was very different. We deleted the closet. We hung up new drywall. Ben helped me run the electrical outlets. I did a coat of primer. I've done some mudding in the rest of the room, as you can see. Ben is going to be coming back to help me with the original plan of the built-in bookshelf. He's a carpenter, I am not, and I want this to look beautiful, so he's been so kind to come and help me again and teach me a few things. So long story short, I need to get this room into tip-top shape for when Ben comes to help with the built-in. So today, sanding and priming. Tomorrow, get excited because I ordered a bunch of paint swatches. We get to choose the paint color. I also made an absurd impulsive decision, okay? And I bought a wallpaper for the built-in bookshelf wall. It is a pretty crazy wallpaper. It is mostly black. <laughs> but listen, you gotta trust me on this, okay? I'm going with my gut. I'm taking a, a design risk for sure, but I think it could really pay off. I think it could look really cool. Oh, <laughs> do you remember how nasty I got when I took down that wall? My hair hated me and it's still recovering from all of that dry dust. I don't want to hurt my hair again, so bear with me now. It's about to get a little sexy. <laughs> oh God. Okay, we need <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's quit messing around. We gotta get to work. Listen, if there's anything this old house is teaching me, is that it is absolutely necessary to find joy in the mundane. Sanding white walls all day long is not glamorous nor exciting, but there is joy to be had in this moment as there is in any other. That's what I'm learning. Look at the amount of dust on this floor. If you can't tell by how absolutely, oh my God, <laughs> filthy I am, uh, I've been at this for a while. Oh my gosh, look at me. Crazy looking, look at my eyelashes. I'm not gonna prime tonight, I'm just gonna let all of this dust settle, and tomorrow I'll clean up, hit it with a coat of primer, and we can do the fun stuff because all of the paint color should be in. And I can show you my crazy wallpaper, so. Call it for the night, I'm gonna stoke the fire and cozy up with Rio. See you guys tomorrow. I'm gonna to share another new recipe I'm trying for the first time. Oh my gosh, look at this. I've pickled my own onions for the first time. Look at that color. Today for lunch, we are going to be making a zesty pink nourish bowl. Let's give it a try. I'll leave the recipe down below in the description. 
Just a few years ago, I was wildly insecure about how little I knew about cooking and about food in general. Living in the cottage, however, where restaurants and grocery stores are a bit further away, it has encouraged me to transform my insecurity about cooking into curiosity. Welcome back to another day at Dreamwood Cottage. Today we prime because I didn't get to it last time. <laughs> Earlier this afternoon, I sanded the trim because the trim will be painted as well. Uh, we just gotta get all of the not so fun stuff out of the way before we can get to the fun stuff. Paint colors are coming in today, so that'll be really exciting. Uh, but first, we prime. Here we go again. <laughs> Rio, come on over, sweetie. Give me a kiss. Come here, sweetie. Bye. We're gonna have a good time. Yep, yep, yep. For a, that's a paint break bucket. Who let me buy a house? I don't know how I'm supposed to entertain you all when it's just boring standing and prime. Well, a couple of hand flips. A couple of. How do I make this interesting? I don't know. But uh, thanks for being on this journey with me. Yeah. Pour it. This is the exciting part. I need my roller. <laughs> It's time. It's time. Trim color and swatches. I need to give you guys a recap on the vision for this room. As I've been making Pinterest boards for the design style of this room, Pinterest has dubbed my design style whimsy gothic, witch core. Think cottage core, but with very velvety, rich colors and textures. I want it to feel pretty magical and mysterious but extremely cozy. I don't want it to feel too old or pretentious. Think whimsical colors and decor, very feminine, delicate touches, contrasted with very deep, rich tones. I decided I needed to choose a muse, right? A design piece that I just absolutely loved and then designed the rest of the room around that. The muse I chose was this wallpaper. I found this wallpaper randomly and instantly fell in love, so I knew that I needed to design the rest of the room around that. It is a pretty bold choice, but I think it really ties into what I'm trying to accomplish those deeper, darker, more masculine tones with these delicate feminine features like this butterfly. And if any of you guys have been around long enough, you know that the bus I lived in and built, I named it Monarch. So the fact that I found a wallpaper with these beautiful little monarchs on it, it felt like it was really illustrative of my story. I knew I had to get it. And so I needed to design a color palette surrounding this wallpaper. Here are the four swatches I chose. Sentimental Reasons, which is a warm top gray. Kismet, this is a really rich green. Studio Hours, this to me feels like a very feminine color. It feels a little safer. But sometimes it looks more pink, sometimes it looks more gray. The last color we have on the palette is Lobby Scene. This is a dark, warm, purple red. Whoa! This color palette was actually inspired by this picture of a flower that I found. I'm taking some design risks, okay? I know that. But we've come this far, we gotta take a shot. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick these up on the wall. I'm not gonna choose a color today because I think it's really important to see these colors on the wall at different times of the day in different light because it's gonna look different. Colors are pretty intimate thing, don't you think? <laughs> All right, let's get out of the house for a bit, shall we? For me, it feels easy to find the magic of life in a place like this. But discovering it in unusual places, like when sanding a wall or experiencing grief, 
I think if I can find it there, um, I think that just gives me a lot of hope. I don't need to be doing anything extraordinary with my life to find purpose. I don't need to be at peace and in a serene setting to be happy. This week was the anniversary of a lot of grief in my life and being able to still experience the magic of this life, the magic in the mundane, um, it really helped pull me through. I am just so madly in love with this life and I haven't always been in that place. So it feels really good and it feels even better to share it with you. I hope you can come on back to Dreamwood whenever you need it. It'll be here and so will I.